Okay, hello guys. This is going to be a video on basically water play in Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition. Uh, it's going to be on about booming with C, countering with C, um, what sort of strats I do, um, what sort of ad adaptations I do, basically. And yeah, uh, I'm so, I've just got a few games. Uh, Examples. I'm going to start off with countering uh, C. I know a lot of people in the community struggle with that. Um, so let's just get right to it uh, once it loads. So this is a tournament game between me and the Sea God himself, Kanisi, the most notorious water player, uh, which a lot of players seem to struggle with, that sort of style on like particularly high sea maps, like high whale maps, um, like this one. But I, I picked India here first, and he counterpicked with Port. Um, usually this is a good matchup for Port, but on this type of map, I think it's India favoured, so I was quite happy with his uh, Civ pick. On another map, like Malaysia or Borneo, or, you know, maps with two ponds like Baja California, I'd probably favour Port heavily. But on this type of map, I'd probably favour India, especially with the sheep as well. So, loading into this game, I, I'll i go into what I was thinking at the, in, in a bit. But the first thing I want to do is get all the sheep. Um, I want to get my wood trickle as soon as possible. Because um, it's just extra, it's an extra veal for India, because they get a veal per shipment. And obviously getting the wood trickle as early as possible is very good in terms of getting your age up time being really good so you want to go around the map get as many sheep as possible kind of ignore treasures for now i wouldn't take them but i just try and get as many sheep as possible um so i'll start off with the free market um normally most civs would try and get like an early hunting dogs like i think kanisi does this game um but with India, you don't really want to be spending any wood on market upgrades. You just want to spend wood on vills and then try and be up as quickly as possible. Um, so my game plan is basically uh, forward aggro at mid-map. I'm clicking the wrong buttons. I want to put my forward aggro here. I don't want to put it here. It's too greedy. It's too scary. He could potentially 3 cow if I rush it. And he would get it down. If I put it down here, it's not securing enough C. He's just going to have two thirds of the C and just be happily booming and just commit to holding the mid map position. Um, so I think the middle of the map is perfect. You get three whales behind like your agrofort, so you can defend your side of the C and you can like contain his at the very least. Um, but Spoilers alert, I'm going to do a little bit more than containing his C, so I'm just going to get to what I was thinking. So I think there's several ways of countering C. Um, the main one would be to pressure both on land and C. I'm just going to speed this up a bit because it's still H1, it's not very important. Um, so I do cut a vill here, I go 12 plus the trickle, so it'll be 13 vills. I'm going to send my one vill to build the agrofort, and then once the foundation is down, I'm going to send three more vills. Because if he age too slow, he can potentially send two carols first, train one, and just kill the agrofort before you can even like train a batch of sepoys, for example. Um, so I just place my aggro here, like wherever I can, and then I send three vills to go build it. Four vills is quite an efficient number to build the agrofort. You don't want to send three or five or whatever, so... Um, yeah, four is like the same age up time as like a European Civ, as just clicking up with like a quartermaster politician, for example. Um, so I see this wall, I think. I'm going to go to my fourth wall. Yeah, I see this wall. And so I kind of assume there's a dock here as well. Um, so what's my plan? My plan is to do like a little early boom, get a lot of market upgrades. Ship 700 wood first to get my infrastructure down and then do some sort of little contesting of sea. 
Um, so in the meantime, I'm just getting around getting treasures. I kind of know what he's doing because I checked his deck. I can look at it now. Uh, I'm going to pause for a bit because there's a few things I want to talk about. Um, so he sends schooners first, you know, normal poor stuff. And there you go, 700 woods. Going to drop a second dock, probably a third one with the wood. And just spam docks from two dock, uh, spam boats from two docks. Um, so, what is my plan here? I'm going to do a little early boom. Then I'm going to ship, so I'll go 700 wood first. I'm going to ship two cowbells um, to idle his fishing operation because you can't just let this go unchecked. You can't just let him gather because he's going to be sending stuff like 30% gather rate, 35% on whales, 10% on everything. Like You want to avoid him sending this cards, uh, these cards, sorry, like the whale oil, eco theory, rendering plant, and you want him to force to ship cards like two caravels, advanced dock, Coastal defences, all that eight bow, CM, that sort of thing. You want to set, want him to force to send defensive options rather than eco options. And the way you do that is pressure both on land and on sea at the same time or like simultaneously. So, for example, after 700 wood. I'm going to ship two caravels. With the wood, I'm going to drop a castle next to Malgra Fort so he can't just three caravel rush it. Uh, and I'm going to drop a dock. Why? Well, I'm going to drop this dock to um, basically repair my caravels, potentially train a third. And he can't exactly push this, this uh, fortified position, which it will become because um, it will have a castle here, it'll have a dog, and it will have an agrofort that does 100 anti-ship damage. So I'm up now, I'll come back to my other point later, but I'm up now, have my 2 sepoy, I'm going to go to my perspective, I'm going to play it a bit slower. There's just a lot of talk, a lot of things to talk about in this sort of style of game, because you've got to do like a land pressure and a sea pressure, so the two caravels are going to um, idle his boats, he's going to either send two caravels or advance dock, and the counterplay would be if it's advanced stock, you want to siege with the sepoys. And if it's um, two caravels, then you kind of want to go back and stay under your uh, castle and agrofort. So in the meantime, I'm getting all my market upgrades. I'm shipping wood. So with this wood, I'm going to build a TP to get my uh, build more streamlined. I do have that shipment malice with India. They get shipments six percent slower than other sieves, um, so I kind of want to negate that. I've got that with the sheep, but it uh, streamlines my build even more with this trading post. Um, and then with the other wood, uh, I think now I'm stacking for imperial bureaucracy. So with this upgrade, I think I have all my market upgrades now. So that's my last one. The big bad boy upgrade, 10% on every resource, so that's really good. And now with the wood, you can see my villa coming here to build a dock, but then I actually changed my mind because I want to have it right underneath the agrofort. And the reason being is that I want the agrofort to cover uh, my caravels repairing at this dock, basically. And I'll put the castle down here with four villas. Putting it down with like one or two villas, it will go up too slowly if he does plan to go caravels next. Um, instead of uh, so if he if he plans to go caravels instead of um, like I don't know rendering plant or uh, whale oil or eco theory you know eco upgrades. Um, so I go two caravels now. I drop the dock, drop the castle, um, and I'm going to do my best to idle his eco with. Uh, my two caravels. In the meantime, with my land force, I'm just picking up all the treasures I can get. I picked up a, oops, a bit of lag there. I picked up 135 coin, picked up 80 wood. Um, and now I'm picking up this 40 food. And then I'm just trying to get whatever treasure I can, basically. Um, which is pretty much all of them. So I ship two caravel. Get a, he reacts immediately, which is good by him. So I'm, I'm just idling what? How many boats are in here? Eight boats. That's eight vills idled. You can see like 
the moment like these bills go idle, it just look, his eco looks a lot less scary, right? Like he's not got enough food to have constantly build production. Um, even just by shipping two cows instantly, because those eight boats could be gathering and he'd have constant fills, so his TCs are idle right now. And he's shipping the advanced dock. If we go over to my perspective, oh shit, that's not there, uh, and my view lock, you can see me moving the caravel just out of the range of the dock, trying to idle the boats and move it out of the range. Uh, and now I'm just trying to. Okay, so now I go to Siege's dock. I see that he doesn't have any caravels out, so I can just siege his dock without any problems, basically. He's not going to start shooting it with caravels, he's not going to shoot it with muskets and or crossbows or whatever, because he doesn't want to invest into that so early. So now I'm just cycling through the edge of the water, out of the range of the docks, and the one thing you want to check here constantly is whether he's shipped a valve stock, and right there I click on his dock, like throughout this, throughout like the early game, I was clicking on this dock um, just to make sure if he's got advanced dock, and he does. So now it's just like, okay, my plan upon H three has changed a bit. So normally, if he did caravels, like three caravels, I would just go back an age, and then I'd push with frigates. I'd train one with the eight hundred with age up, and just gathering coin. And then I'd ship one. So I'd have two frigates versus three caravels and a couple of docks. And I'd just push this slowly with like sepoys sieging the docks. I'd train sepoys after the frigate. And I would just um, siege these docks with the sepoys and the two frigates and the two caravels versus non advanced docks because he would have three caravels instead. And obviously, two frigates, two caravels would destroy three caravels even with dock support. So that was my tie and push there. But as he went advanced docks, my first shipment will be siege elephants. Um, because he's literally had nothing to deal with them. He's not going to have like frigates shooting at the siege enemies. He's not going to have casadors anytime soon because he wants to age as well. You can even see in the scores already. At this point in the game, ports should have like an equal score with India, I think. Um, but as like he's had to ship advanced dock, he's idling so many... He's hiding so many vills. You've got to remember, like, if you don't go see at all, he's got time to manage his at normal vills as well. Um, so if, if you just go full land, put an aggro fort here, sending sea poise, all he has to do is just spam bokes, not care about the sea at all, and just put 10 vills in the TC whilst the rest are gathering. That's just super easy mode for him. If he's constantly putting boats in and out of this dock, microing on the caravels, um, making sure they don't die to caravel broadsides, um, then he's going to be managing his land eco much less effectively, efficiently. I mean, uh, so he's got he's got like five idols back here, six idols back here. He's got what five idle boats in that one, and he's also being forced to train a vel, which also de further delays his age up. Like, look at his resources now. He's been idled off food with like, now it's currently 5, but there was a lot more earlier. There was like 8 earlier, even close to 10. And that's like 8 vills not gathering food for a long portion of the game. And that's why his food count's so low. He's had to train the caravel. He's not got as many boats out as he hopes he would at this point. It's almost 8 minutes and he's only got 11 boats gathering. And he would obviously have more food and coin bank, especially if he's gathering from these whales and all these fish uncontested. You could argue he'd have less uh, less people gathering if I was doing some land pressure. But I mean, he's not depleting natural resources and he's still trading efficiently with 10 mils in the TC versus two shot sepoys. So I don't really want to do any land pressure, especially when there's two TCs next to each other, one shotting sepoy. Um, and that's actually just quite efficient for him, just two, like one shot in Sepoy, they cost like 120 res. And if he just constantly one, -shot, one shots them, it's going to be really efficient. So any land pressure is not going to do anything at all. Generally, training Sepoys in H2 won't do much unless I can get them on the dock and he's sent advanced docks. In this game, I've actually got too much coin and food to age up. 
basically. I could have potentially cancelled this Eastern Villager, it's a bunch of food, sold a bunch of food, gather a bit of coin, and just, instead of ship this shipment, I could have even gone Wood Trickle or Improved Warships. Improved Warships would have been better, probably. Um, but that's a little mistake I did. I could have even trained, like, five Sepoys now to seize the dock. I can see he's gone Advanced Dock. Um, which means you go for a bit of land aggression because obviously like, advanced dogs can't shoot land units. Um, and then he has to train a cowbell on top of going advanced dogs, which is more investment just for the sake of having two sepoys and two elephants. Um, and yeah, you can see he's training the cowbell now. So you can see he's not close to raging. I'm close to raging. I'm going to have a huge window to do a lot of damage here. He's had to invest, uh, like, advanced stock. Well, only advanced stock so far, but he's also had to garrison a lot. Uh, basically idled him a lot with just shipping two, gar two caravels on my own. So it's not a big deal for me, but it's a big deal for him. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to have a huge window, like, probably a solid two minutes to do damage in early fortress by the time he hits up. And... Um, yeah, so he's trained this caravel. He's going to use it to try and uh, fend off the sepoys. Parthing really poorly, but he'll get there eventually. But that's the thing, right? If you've got the agrofort on top. So he does a broadside. My sepoys are low. I'm going to be like, okay, I need to get out of here. I do react a bit late, but I do so. And you got to remember, these Indian monks can heal the sepoy. And they've already done damage on the dock. He's got to repair it with some wood. It's some investment still, but... It's, it's, it's like 50 wood or something, it's not a lot, but it's still something for free because I'm just going to heal these bad boys up back to full HP, like one elephant on the other, uh, one elephant on one, another elephant on the other, and he's going to have to use wood or he's just going to lose this dock. Um, and here is an interesting move that I do. Um, I see he's got advanced docks and I see he's trained this caravel. So what do I do? I actually broadside the fishing boats, and you think this might be bad. The thing is, if I broadside the caravel, he's just going to repair it with advanced docks really quickly. Because if you don't know, advanced docks repairs uh, heal work rate for ships is plus fifty percent, and they already repair quite quickly. So it's going to be repaired like instantly. So there's no point broadsiding and then him going to repair it. You want to do economic damage here. Because you can just, he can't push you back. It's not like he can broadside you and then follow you and kill you. Because you're just going to go back to the refuge of the castle in the Agrifort. Where it's doing 200 damage and the broadside from the other caravel. So I'm just going to use the broadside on the boats. Get one or two boats and then just get out of there. And it's not like he's going to try and chase me. But like once, and get the advanced dock shooting. But once you realise, okay... I'm not going to get it, I'm going to ungarrison and just pull the boat back. Uh, I'm aging up with the 800 wood. Like I said, I'm going to use that for training frigates, maybe even uh, TC, but I think in this scenario, I want to abuse this timing window as much as possible, because I know I've been idling his food a lot, and I know he's gone advanced docks, so I know he's, his age up's going to be a bit delayed. I'm just scouting the shoreline with my dog, checking if there's a, a back dock here. And he's sending his caravel back here for some reason, not really sure why. Um, so I'm training sepoys in transition. I've stacked enough food to instantly get siege elephants, which cost 350 food. And as I've seen, he's gone advanced dock. I'm just going to push on land and go siege elephants first rather than a frigate. Like I said before, if he did caravels, I'd probably go for a warship based uh, play instead of a land based play. Because the three caravels would just kill the siege elephants and the sepoys. Well, they wouldn't kill the siege elephants, but they'd delay them. you just probably broadside on the siege elephants and then go repair another dock. But with the warships, he can't just let these docks fall. So, yeah. Um, so, with the wood, I've got enough food and coin. Food for the siege elephants, coin for a frigate. I just want to deny this outpost and then go repair again. I literally haven't lost the caravel yet this game. Haven't lost the sepoy either and I've just forced so much response out of him. He's only clicking up now. I've been in fortress for the solid like 10 to 15 seconds. Shipping siege elephants now. 
and I've got a frigate in queue, uh, and I'm gathering my uh, finishing gathering my wood crates. Um, 0.97. I think he's got uh, gill nets, but I don't think he has long lines. He hasn't really got the eco to afford to uh, uh, get long lines, which is the second fishing upgrade, which is like 20%. It's huge. Or is it 30% even? It was, either way, it's a lot. Um, for all these boats that are gathering. But yeah, he's he's got like 10 boats in here. He's got 8 boats in here. He tries to sne uh, snipe my sepoy, but I pull them back on time and then pop the siege elephants on time as well. It's all about timings as well. Um, so I'm going to just kill this dock. Keep the caravels out of the... Don't want to give this dock any value at all. He even sent Team Coastal Defences, by the way. So he's got this 1.8 times multiplier plus advanced docks. So he's going to kill these boats really fast if they're in range. And I want to keep these boats out of range as much as possible and just try and idle as many boats as possible going around the edge of the sea. Meanwhile, the siege elephants and the sea poise are going to start cleaning up the docks. As you can see, I've got my frigate on the edge, just trying to snipe the caravel on these whale uh, boats. And now I'm frigging, uh, frigging, I'm sending a frigate of my own, getting armor plating from the dock, which is 50% HP on warships. Um, it's much better than the attack, the attack upgrade because that's only 20% and the cost is similar, so you want to get armor plating first always. Um, and now I'm just slow pushing the walls and the docks. He's got no response to this, he's laying down. He, Laid down an artillery foundry, he's training calves, he's getting armor plating for himself, and he's probably get a ship of frigate next. Um, so he's getting armor plating from this dock. Sadly, I don't get it in time, so he does get it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So I, I, I lost the caravel here, but that's because the advanced dock, I should have pulled back that caravel. Uh, I even have armor plating on the way, so there's no point fighting with the caravel before that upgrade. Um, I'm just going to send my frig forward, and I'm going to just slowly dock behind. I should have done this earlier, actually. Just put like a castle here, like one or two castles here, just slowly push up my advancement. Could even start adding fishing boats on my own. Um, but I think I just want to keep this push going, so I kind of want to go into land units now. And I'm sending 1k wood. Um, this is a bit greedy for me, but the reason being, I think I think I saw before these calves. Uh, I think like I think it was either the TC fire or like a dock fire. I saw these calves, so I was just like, okay, I'm gonna go one key wood. If he went Casadors, I would have gone two Mahouts. And the reason being is if he went if he if he. Uh, built a Rax instead of an artillery foundry and train Casadors. Um that counters this entire land army. And having these two monks plus the two Mahouts plus these siege elephants just nuking these walls. I'm gonna have no problem dealing with those Casadors. Um but as I'm as he's went as he went cold, so I know he's got an artillery foundry, he's not gonna have a Rax. But he could have a Rax to be honest. But if he's investing into like an artillery foundry, a barracks, two coals, casadors, that's a lot of investment in its own in its um, own right, basically. So that's also already a good response from me. And then I can easily just switch from double rex sepoy to double rex gurkhas. Could even ship eight gurkhas, but that's highly unlikely. I think warship combat and three caravels is much better. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think I wouldn't have trouble with Casadors here because these monks, very tanky, high range resist, 10 damage with area 2, Casadors have low HP and no melee resist, so it just completely negates the 45% range resist, so uh, the monks and potentially two Mahouts would do fine versus any Casadors, but um, as he doesn't have a barracks or I don't think he has one, and if he does, he wouldn't have many Casadors, so five Casadors would just not be that scary. I'd probably just kill this wall, then kill that wall, send the monks in on the Casadors, and then just be fine. Um, but in this scenario, he goes Colves. I think it's a bit questionable. 
uh, because they don't counter Siege Elephants that hard. They do counter them, but they sort of counter each other. And Siege Elephants can also dodge Culve shots um, quite well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's not the most, the best investment, basically. It's a lot of resources. It's 100 wood, 400 coin. I don't know why it's saying export, I guess, because I'm on the Indian point of view. Um, yeah, there we go. So it's 100 wood, 400 coin, instead of just 10 or 15 Casadors, which would be way more efficient and way more scary. And then I would have shipped the Mahouts in that situation, but as he's not, He's got coals, so I don't need to worry about these coals. I've got siege elephants, and even broadside from Freebus can be quite good. I can just go 1k wood and drop one or two TCs. Because you also got to remember, he's on 3 TC. It's not exclusively this C eco. You could clean up C, but if you've gone all in, his eco, his land eco is just going to be better than yours. He, he, he will care about losing C because he's invested a lot into it. But if his land eco is better than yours and you haven't trained fishing boats or you haven't like added more TCs, you're just going to fall behind. Even if you've done all this damage, he's going to take over eventually on land and then he's going to start spamming on land and just play it like a normal land game. So, what do you do? You drop one or two TCs forward, ideally. like There's like four hunts in the mine here. I think I dropped one around here just to make him feel fully contained. I could drop a TC here, but I don't know, it seems quite a stretch to send like four bills up here to build a TC, but I think here's like good enough. Like there's so many resources out here and it's like right on the doorstep of him. So I could even just like, I don't know, train a couple of flare elephants, kill the uh, wall segment, and then just send like the PTARs from the British consulate to kill the TC, for example, that sort of thing. Could run sepoys in there, you know, just all sorts of stuff. Um, so, just getting that map pressure with the TCs is going to be good as well as a good follow up. Because you also got to think about the follow up. It's not just this a push, and it's just like hit and miss with this push. This push has just got to do as much damage as possible without investing too much into it. Because if he just somehow holds it, and well, even with half these boats dead, he's just going to get back onto sea. And, well, yeah, that's not going to be good for you. So I'm just trying to dodge this broadside. Do a good job. He only does 13 damage. But I, I fail when dodging the Colves, I think. So these Colves are going to get good value on my Siege Elephants. So I'm trying to dodge now, but I messed up. Um, but I, he does lose a coal for it. He could have popped those in much earlier. And, okay, so this is the thing I want to talk about. See these, see these two cannonballs. These two siege elephants were locked on. And if we go to my line of sight, I've barely got it in line of sight. So if you see your elephants or any unit basically, it could happen with like a sepoy aiming at a villager and the villager goes out of range of the sepoy but you still got line of sight and it's locked, he's going to shoot. Likewise with siege elephants, likewise with culverin shots, if the culver is locked onto the siege elephant, uh, and he's got line of sight with his hero, and you're just moving back, the Colby is still going to shoot. Luckily, I had my land army here, so I barely, I literally barely have, because this is obviously more than 28 range. This is like 35, 40, this is like 40 range. <coughs> Excuse me. Or even more, maybe even 45. No, it's probably about 40, and they have 28 range, but they've locked. Luckily, I have this like elephant and this sepoy, just in range of the line of sight and then it ends up getting this caravel so i'll get the caravel that that lock on feature can apply to any sort of um unit just as long as you maintain line of sight it's gonna fire just make sure you don't cancel the animation by moving your siege elephants you just gotta let them be once they've locked on so you just let them be don't move them Otherwise, they're going to cancel the shot, and then they're going to fire if you maintain line of sight. Okay, so now I'm slowly pushing these walls. He's coming with a frigate to kill my sea jellies. I'm going to pull back. So this is like a little micro battle. I'm going to pause it here. You're going to come close to the coast. They have 28 range. Frigate has 30. He has more range, so he can always engage you. 
But as you want to abuse CJ Elephant mobility in this scenario. So you can go within range of the frigate, shoot it, and as boats have that little set, set up animation where they sort of turn and then start firing, you can be out of range before he's actually turned and shot. So he was trying to target siege elephants, the frigate's now like mess like bugging out, it's now turned to facing my frigate or just I don't know what it's doing, it's just moving it back. And then like I'm gonna move it back here if he moves comes forward with it, but he's going back because I got my two carded frigates here. Just zoning the sea. Um they are fighting the advanced dock right now, but I think I do pull it back on time. Like, look at the amount of damage it's doing, considering how many upgrades this frigate has. And, like, it's, it's almost low HP already. So I end up pulling back both, because I just want to pair them. And, well, I think this was a mistake. Oh no, I pull back one, I just pull back the low HP one. So I'm just letting my frig. I'm basically surrounding this frigate, right? This frigate's trying to kill the sea jellies, I do the same thing again, move out of range, shoot move back whilst this frigate was shooting at it the entire time uh, in the meantime I'm just healing my boats heal quite quickly um, and just yeah look at the amount of damage this does but yeah I killed the dock look at the amount of idle boats he has and in the meantime he's got he's got 58 vills right yeah be like 58 vills versus 44 if there was like a population graph at the top of the screen like we did on the old UI you'd be thinking oh Port Zico is quite good it's ahead of India's he's got 12 more fills and then you see this he's got 30 idle fills like <laughs> and my fills are gathering more efficiently uh, like I said before 0 0.78 coin per second on mines he's got 0 0.6 coin per second so my fills are just gathering more efficiently than his land fills he's got 0 0.97 on food Meanwhile, I've got 1.09, and then on woods, I do have the Indian Gathering bonus, but I've got Imperial Bureaucracy, so he's got 0 0.55, which is just Gangsaw, and I've got 0 0.65, so it's just way more efficient for me. Um, I'm just gathering on land at this point in time, as I've done so much damage on the sea. Um, yeah, so now I'm sending improved warships. I mean, this is where the game is quite over. He's trying to use Casadors to snipe the these sea jellies. He's only got two out. He should have been trying this before, but I pulled them back. And he should have been making more Casadors, basically. This would be like, the best time to do it as well, because both my monks are dead, and I don't have Mahouts on the field, so... Um, this is like the best time to have castors. He's just he's kind of trying to snipe them now with Minutemen, but I see it, so I'm gonna pull back my elephants to safety and just kill these Minutemen with my sepoy. And this is gonna be I didn't train a single caravel this game, I shipped both of them, but they do end up both dying to advanced docks, sadly. They did their job. They were very good. I could have gone the whole game without losing either of them, but you gotta bear in mind this entire game, 14 minutes. 50 seconds. I've only trained one frigate. I've only trained one frigate and sent uh, and uh, got armor plating for my dogs. I literally haven't trained anything else or teched anything else. Like, I didn't get the attack upgrade. I um, didn't train any caravels. I didn't train a third frigate. This has literally just been the same boat count that I had since early fortress. And that was at like 10 minutes, and now 5 minutes later I still got the same boats, I did lose 2 caravels, but they've done their job. Um, and yeah, it's just making use of your units as efficiently as possible, and making sure they're getting repaired um, when they're not fighting. Just making sure they get you're getting so much, because you don't lose resources by repairing. It's free, so it's like any free stuff you can get to maintain your military units, you're going to do it. So, uh, as you can see, I'm 3 TC booming. There's this TC here that's securing so many resources. Could potentially prop, uh, pop out a brick consulate petard. 
could just get this wall down with like five sepoys or even just one siege elephant over here just killing the wall segment in like four shots and then sending the petards in and killing this TC before they killed this TC meanwhile I'm through TC booming myself I'm on 49 vils he's on 59 but 30 of them are idle most of them in this dock and of course my landfills are gathering more efficiently and you can see it in the scores like I've taken control of basically all the sea He's just got this one dock here that has, I think, a patch of fish here that has 200 food left in it. And then the next food location is here. And the first whale is here, which is actually really far away. And it's right on the edge, so it's not like the dock. You could put the frigate here, just shoot at the boats here, and the dock wouldn't be in range. So, um, yeah, it's just, you can really, this isn't the best map for sea. And which is why I'm going to cover other games in my next video. Um, but in this video, I'm going to be focusing more on Cantering Sea on like this sort of linear style of map, like Manchuria, Florida, um, that sort of thing. But yeah, like basically, the simple way to Cantering Sea is having both land pressure and sea pressure. So if you're a Brit, for example, you put the tower on his dock, probably go 700 wood first, and build a dock of your own, train some pikes or musks, probably go musks because they can shoot as well, like vills and stuff. Um, and I'd probably even train a cow rails brit as well with the dock because the tower is not as strong as the agri fort. Um, and then you'd have three cow rails and the tower locked down in this dock. Uh, could even add a second tower, but that's probably too much investment for a civ like Brit. Um, and yeah, and then you can add another dock here, maybe even start sea booming yourself. Whilst, like, if your musks can't do anything here, it's highly unlikely they can't, but if they can't, then you can start raiding with them, and then, like, or even just, like, go to siege another dock, send five musk here, he sends his like a caravel or two back here probably one caravel and then you can send your next bus to start sieging the stock and you can't have like two or three caravels in like all these places like you could have like one here killing like five musk here or ten musk here but you'd obviously pull back and then if you had like uh, two caravels here you'd have your three and you'd have the tower support to secure this dock just to kill this dock basically um, but I can get back onto those those sort of games next game uh, in my next video. But I'm just going to ch check the graphs just to show you like the power of having a well executed anti water play. So I got 20 buildings raised. That does include walls, I think. So a lot of those were walls, but it was also docks and the TCs. I think I killed two TCs. I oh, know I killed one. I killed one TC, killed an artillery foundry, killed a couple of houses, you know, that sort of thing. And I'm just going to check the graph. So, when you see this villager graph, and you see he has 44 vills at 7 minutes, and you have 24, this is when people think water is OP, because he's just up 20 vills. But, if you can idle those vills, let me go to other villagers. Then what use is having those extra bills if you can't gather with them and you're gathering more efficiently and as you can see throughout the course of this game he's constantly having idle bills there's never a time where it goes back to zero he always has a large portion of idle bills this includes this includes just walking to one resource location to another it's not like when they're not gathering basically um or not building so this he goes from like the lowest idle vill count is 6, which is horrible, right? That's like a large portion of your eco not gathering. But imagine you you leave, you leave like 6 idle vills for about 7 minutes. That's a lot of wasted res. Now imagine it's even more than 6. So it's at the lowest it's 6. It gets up to 11 here. Then 12, then he goes unidle, then idle again, then unidle, then idle again, then unidle, then idle again, and it goes all the way up to 28, then it goes down to 
13 again, then it goes up to 23, and yada, yada, yada. There's just more and more idle vills as the game goes on. And meanwhile, I, I sometimes I have idle vills here, so the lowest I get is 4, just because there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in this type of game. But as you can see, this this is much lower than like the av like the average for me is about what four idle vills, and that's with walking time, so it's not fully idle. It's not just sitting in the in a dock doing nothing. It's like going to like the next hunt or something. Um, but yeah, so there's times where I have no idle vills, stuff like that. Um, so the average would be about I don't know here maybe or maybe like here like a little bit under eight so about six idle fills is probably my average and then his average is like uh probably about here so it's like 24 and what was the difference in vills at that point 20 yeah and if he's got 24 idle fills i have like six my i my uh, land fills are gathering more efficiently it's just good for me. And hopefully the resource gra a gathered graph shows it. So he does have more vills. And he's H2. So he's pumping out those boats before I can pressure him. But then I can match his eco. This was like me idling his boats. Uh, this was 700 coin I believe. This was 700 wood. And uh, this is me aging. And then this was like where he was gathering when... This is where he was gathering when I wasn't pressuring, right? When I just had my caravels back, my sepoys back. And you can see, if he just kept at that rate, he would have just outgathered me. If I didn't pressure him at all, he would have just kept going at this sort of concave. Or this gradient, I should, sh I should say. And he would outgather me, and the game would be completely different. But as I was idling him, pressuring his docks, forcing like cars like advanced dock, team coastal defences... Uh, frigate, advanced warships, that sort of thing. Training ca two caravels, not even shipping them. Um, then it's just good for me. And you can see the ecos are kind of similar, despite the eco the uh, idle vills. I mean, I'm ahead, which is which is something not usually the case when you're against the sea boom. But then I really start getting ahead when my three TCs are starting paying, starting to pay off. So I have to stop his eco here. This is the window here. Like nine, eight, eight. It's basically like this early game pressure here where he's sort of not flat lines, but it's like lower than here, for example. It's a bit lower here than here. So this is where I was caravel rushing, not rushing him, but caravel like idling him. And this is where I did my main push here. So it's like this sort of area in the game is the timing window to punish your sea boom. You don't want to do it too early because then you just neglect your eco completely. Um, and then that's just really bad. Because then if he holds, if you go two cowbell first, he just goes two cowbell himself and idles some fishing boats in the dock to shoot at you. He's going to take a good trade and then you just ship two cowbells first as like a sieve like Brit when 700 wood would be so much more valuable. You kind of do a little bit of eco first before you pressure C, just so you can keep up and have the eco to like do this push here that does way more damage than like a two cowbell rush here, for example. Um, and then I sort of stagnated this boom, did a bit of a boom myself with three TCs, got the auto bills, then went brick consulate, I believe, that sort of thing. And then I started out ecoing here, and yeah. Out echoing a sea boom by 3k at 14 minutes into the game is incredible. So I think this strat was really good. Obviously, if he didn't do like the boat, the dock stuff, I would go more warship heavy rather than siege elephants. I probably would have gone frigate, then to improve warships, and then three caravels, and then war uh, siege elephants after that. Um, but then if he goes advanced dock, then I, yeah. I'd, I'd go Siege Elephants ASAP. Um, and then train Sepoys, and if he goes Catadors, I'd probably ship Mahouts and probably mix in some Gurkhas as well. Because he's probably most likely going to be one Raxing. He's uh, investing a lot of wood into warships whilst you've just shipped yours and just trained one from the uh, Tower of Victory uh, wood. 
and then you're just spamming like Sepoy Gurkha with the sea jellies on the coast, just cleaning it up. Um, but this, this, so this was my guide on the um, sort of like a linear style sea map, and it can be very difficult for India to pressure on like a map with sea on both sides. But I'll get onto that in my next video. So thanks for watching. Hope this was informative and peace.